Hello, hello, Saners. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome to the first official Trade Talk video of 2024. Obviously, it was going to be about Josh Battle and that situation. So, Jack Steele has just spoken up in an article that um, has just been posted and makes for interesting reading. I'll read a quote from it. Um, we can decipher this together, put it in the comments. Um, but he said, so the article says, but Steele, who joined the Saints the same time as Battle in late 2016, said his teammates seemed genuinely torn and could yet stay. Quote, absolutely, I think he is still weighing it up, Steele said. He loves the club and he has been part of this club as long as I have. So I know if he did leave, he would be pretty sad about it. So I'm hoping he doesn't depart. I hope he stays. He's a valuable asset to us and what we are trying to do as a team. Hopefully it swings our way, but we will wait and see. We love him. He's a star. That's what Jack Steele has to say about Josh Battle. There's been mixed feelings across the fan base. Um, it seems to be changing drastically this is the time of season isn't it silly season we don't know what to believe we don't know what's news we don't know what's real all that sort of stuff so last week we all know leading up to this game that he wanted to run through the banner uh, with his daughter and people kind of i guess saw that as proof yeah he's leaving he wants to run out and have one final moment as a saner with his daughter to basically cap off his final game and I believe the AFL said that they basically said, no, you can't do that because it's a non-milestone game. Um, I'm not sure if he still did it. Um, someone said he might have. I honestly can't remember what he did when he ran out. So confirm it in the comments. But I mean, I wouldn't necessarily read too much into that. You could misconstrue that and think that it's for Father's Day coming up and he's just wanting to do that. And maybe he's never done that before and it's a complete coincidence or... Some people will flip it and say, well, no, that's him just kind of hinting that he's fully committed to the club and it's a family and we're together and this and that. No, at the end of the day, <laughs> until it's announced, that's what it's going to be. But the crux of it is that um, Hawthorne, from the, from the word go, the talk was that Hawthorne was offering enough that we would get first round compensation and everyone was pretty excited about that. Obviously devastated to hear that we might be losing you know, our our second best defender behind Cal Wilkie, to be honest, our best centre half back, our real only centre half back, um, and he's only really hitting the peak of his powers now. So to lose him at this point in time to a team, especially like Hawthorne, or on the up, and we're, you know, they're kind of one of the teams we're competing with to really get into that top eight, top four situation, it would hurt. I know he's a lifelong Hawks fan. His email has got Hawthorne in it from a kid. You know, I think he's got potentially a tattoo, Hawthorne tattoo. I don't know. Um, so, yes, there's a lot of persuasion towards the Hawks. And obviously, the way they're playing, they're playing finals. That doesn't help our cause. But what helps our cause is our form in the back end of the season. Um, the fact that we might not get a first round pick at the moment from the talk. So, apparently, Hawthorne offered 850 over six years, I believe. Um, and that doesn't trigger band one compensation i think that is forcing st kilda into some sort of action i think we've probably gone in and i'd like to think we've gone in and maybe up that to the 900 mark and whether that forces hawthorne's hand and they need to go overs and we trigger that band one compensation which means we'd get what pick seven and eight or eight and nine whatever it may be and or he decides to stay because at the end of the day we are going somewhere we're not middling we don't have some sort of optimism i think the back end of the year finishing eight wins from the final 12 games is really important to not only make his decision a little bit more difficult um in making because if we had just fallen away and finished bottom three i mean it's a no-brainer on his side but the fact that we've turned the corner a little bit our form line we won some unexpected games against some pretty good opposition the culture seems to be really strong and um you know, that can help to keep players like him, but also to maybe entice some players from other clubs. So that's really important. But I put it to the viewers of this video. What is the ideal situation? 
is the draft pick more important or do you think keeping players like Josh Battle, who a lot of people see as that sort of heart and soul play, you know, a lot of premiership sides need these. He's not unheralded because, I mean, he's being talked up and he, you know, clubs want him. And, um, you know, he he's demanding quite a lot of money because of his season. His last couple of seasons have been excellent. Um, but he's got that sort of, like, I've met him, I've spoken to him, I've interviewed him. He's just an awesome guy. So those are the sort of players you want to keep at your club. You know, it's not just, oh, well, we might get a draft pick and it's, you know, that's going to be great for us. But also we talk about that culture piece. Ross Lyon mentioned it in his press conference after the win against Carlton. It's a culture piece and you need certain types of personalities at a club um, to have that culture that can then build into a successful team on and off the field, right? So losing Josh Battle, we don't know how detrimental that could be until, you know, if it happens or not. We don't know. And if we lose him and we get pick 25 or 28 or whatever they're saying it might be, because at the at this point in time, we the only thing St Kilda can do is offer him more money. We can't make him stay. He can choose Hawthorne even if we offer him a million dollars a year. It's his choice at the end of the day. We have no say in it. It's not like last year with Gresham where we had a say. This year is completely different. It's out of our hands, which is unfortunate. But our form, the players coming out and saying they love him and acknowledging he's a star, obviously it could just all be fluff and alluding to the fact that maybe we've already lost him. But um, I like to think we're just going to make his decision a little bit more difficult because we all love him. You know, every St Kilda supporter out there loves seeing him play for our club. I'd hate to see him leave. I mean, I'm of the boat that if it's not going to trigger a ban one compensation, that we need to do everything we can to keep him. And not to say that I wanted him to leave just to get that, but I mean, if you're losing a really valuable player, you might as well get something really good in return. And quite frankly, I don't think what's being rumoured to be coming back the other way is worth it. Um, I think it's more important to keep players like him, especially when he's 25, 26 and just hitting his peak. Um, and our back line is so strong with him there. Him, Wilkie and Dugues, they've looked really good for the last 10 weeks together. Gelled. They all bring something different to the table. Um, and there's just this amazing chemistry in that back half between these players, which, you know, we'd have to sort of rehash and rejig. Um to fill that spot if he did leave. So put it in the comments saying it's just a bit of a quick video here to talk about the Josh Battle situation. There's not really much else to report on that. Obviously, trade talk, I will bring as much information as I can um, to this topic and other, other topics. I do know that Tomlinson from Melbourne, who's only played like, what, 15 games in four seasons, that could be one that we're looking at. Um, he only played the one game this season. He's 31. I think that's a Hail Mary in case we lose Josh Battle. Some people think Ari could replace Josh Battle if he does leave. I'm still not sure about that. He's t to me, Ari's still very much more like Wilkie, where he can intercept and run off. I don't really see Josh Battle, like Ari is a like-for-like -like Josh Battle replacement. Perhaps Caminiti. Perhaps Caminiti goes down back. Who knows? Um, he can go fullback. Dougal Howard go centre-half back. Cal Wilkie do his thing. There's There are ways around it. Um... But I always think, you know, the the key posts, the fullback, center half back, full forward, rucks, they're so much harder to find, they're so much harder to get right. To lose them hurts. So uh, let's see how this goes. There could well be some traction by the end of the week. Hawthorne obviously don't play for another fortnight. So whether he waits, whether the decision is on hold for whatever happens with Hawthorne, I don't know. But if he wants to stay, you'd imagine in the next week, um, we'll hear some sort of confirmation. So. That's trade talk on Josh Battle at the moment, saying as Jack Steele coming out saying he loves him. Surprise, surprise, the captain coming out and saying he loves a valued member of the club. Hopefully, maybe that's code for, hey, maybe he's going to stay. I don't know. That's that's me being blindly optimistic. But we'll wait and see. There's obviously going to be Dylan Shield news and all that. So stay tuned for all that and obviously um, all the content out during the week. So thanks again, Sainers. Comment your thoughts. Let me know how you feel about this situation and uh, we'll chat very soon, no doubt about it. Take care and as always, go you mighty sailors. See you guys.